I've been studying this field for over 40 years. And HARP scares me because I know what it can do. I know that HARP can be used to control the human mind. We are surrounded and bombarded by millions of megawatts of natural energy because the sun blows a solar wind which crashes towards the Earth. Since the Earth is a giant magnet, the magnetic field called the magnetosphere protects us. HARP's original patents were designed to distort or alter the magnetosphere. It's interesting to compare humans and the Earth. The Earth is, has a magnetic field. Humans generate a magnetic field especially in our hearts and brains. Every cell in our body has a powerful magnetic substance called magnetite, which responds sensitively to magnetic fields in our environment. If HARP is altering the magnetosphere, which is the magnetic field of the Earth and all around it, surely this will have an effect on our health and on our physiology. HARP's combined antennae generate a focused billion watt high frequency radio beam which penetrates the lower ionosphere and interacts with the currents of the auroral electrojet. During this modification, this pulsing beam stimulates the ionosphere, creating ELF waves which can move great distances through the lower atmosphere and penetrate into the Earth. And once they get the energy up into the ionosphere, depending on, on what they want to do, they can uh, create a secondary frequency causing the atmosphere to vibrate, sending that signal back down to the Earth. But this same kind of signal, signals in the same frequency range, can affect uh, human mood. The human brain operates on very low frequencies. For example, when we're thinking, I mean, uh, actively, uh, we're generating about 13, 14 cycles per second. When we're meditating, we're generating 8 cycles per second. And when we're asleep, uh, the brain waves are running at about 4 cycles per second. And HARP is capable of generating all of these frequencies. These kinds of signals can control the human brain. And if you can control these frequencies and multiples of these frequencies and various combinations, you can control all kinds of emotions. You can generate happiness. You could generate uh, uh, sadness. You can generate any mood you want. You know, the issue of you know, ELF, extremely low frequencies affecting um, mental states of, of individuals is not new. It goes back to Yale University and the work of Jose Delgado, which is well recognized in the literature. He started first using implants uh, in the brain. He then um, used radio frequency with implants and eventually he found that energy at one fiftieth of what the earth naturally produces could in fact in certain frequency ranges trigger uh, huge mood swings. This document from Maxwell Air Force Base lays out um, the use of electromagnetic weapons technologies for debilitating human beings. Using electromagnetic warfare against human beings you can cause disease, you can cause hysteria, or you can cause passivity for population control. Extremely low frequencies affect us because they are the same frequencies that our brains output. The weapons technologies are changing so dramatically at this particular time. It would be like equating um, introduction of gunpowder to the West or the beginning of the atomic age earlier this century. And that's what's happening with electromagnetic weapons technologies today. Electromagnetic warfare can also be used in coordination with ionospheric warfare. After I had actually left the program in 1987, one of the last communications I had uh, with ARCO indicated that there had been a contract awarded for ionospheric warfare studies. HARP says it's not producing a weapon. Back in 1912, Nikola Tesla said it was possible to split the planet by combining the correct vibrations with the resonance of the planet itself. It's going to be electromagnetic warfare.